How many times must I tell you? You must never put your life on the line for me. Mother has always had a fascination for Lord Mortimer, but has never wanted to tell me why. We are doing our utmost to find your mother as quickly as possible. Without your mother, hundreds of men of the cloth would have gone to the guillotine. All I can tell you is I'm looking for my sister. Do you believe your mother capable of torturing a child? An agreement for cannons. Lord Mortimer assured me that you are to take over the project on behalf of your mother. Johann Christoph von Wollner, Minister of Religious Affairs, and Jacques Perrou, French Revolutionary Tribunal Judge. You will find that Lord Mortimer is not what one would call conventional, Monsieur de Richet. I do apologize for being late. I was obliged to clear up some urgent business. At last we meet, Monsieur de Richet. Do you mind if I call you Louis? Please do. Thank you. I wish to apologize wholeheartedly, Louis. I made you cross the seas, and I wasn't even here to welcome you. When I asked you to join us here, it, it was, of course, in the hope that you would help us find your mother. However, there may be some new developments, but I, I don't know if they are linked to your mother. We have found Elizabeth Adams' body in her room. I'm afraid she was brutally murdered, stabbed several times. I can't believe it. We, we bumped into each other last night on our way to bed. Yes, I know. Duchess Hillsborough informed us that she accompanied you at the beginning of the evening. You apparently bumped into Miss Adams, who wanted to speak to you. We are told you turned her away, and she went away on her own. That's correct. Do you know what she wanted to see you about, by any chance? Not in the least. Pity. The poor child was probably trying to find help. I thought it could wait until tomorrow. Hmm. Apparently not. Louis, I shan't hide the fact that this tragedy puts me in a very delicate situation. I cannot risk upsetting the smooth operation of our next conference. But the case cannot remain unaddressed. I must reassure my guests, and justice will be done. And for that to happen, I must ask for your help. Why is that? You met Elizabeth. You spoke together, I believe. She trusted you. Listen, Louis. Find out who could have committed this murder. I refuse to believe that one of my guests is the murderer. I want to know who is responsible for this. And I trust you. You have my backing. You must stop at nothing. Can I count on you? Of course. H how would you like me to proceed? Maybe you could start by going to the scene of the crime. Elizabeth was attacked in her room. Can you tell me anything else about what happened? Now, Louis, I wouldn't want to influence you. Get over there and form your own opinion. Do you have any suspects in mind, my lord? I spent most of the night talking with Sir Gregory and his eminence Piaggi. So, I think you can remove them from the list of suspects. Monsieur Bonaparte and President Washington left the party after midnight, I believe. They were tired and went up to bed. Right. I'll get up there immediately. Thank you, Louis. Now, once you've finished, come back and let me know your findings. I'll be waiting. And Louis, you've got permission to search through the guests' rooms. They've all been notified and they agree. I've come to speak about the findings of the investigation, my lord. I'm listening, Louis.
I believe I've identified the murderer. Really, Louis? All right, then. Please, think carefully before you give me your answer. This is a very, very serious accusation. It's Volner. Hmm. What proof do you have against him? I found out that he was in love with Elizabeth. As the feeling wasn't mutual, he could have attacked her out of spite. Without any proof of what Adams really thought, it's a weak motive. Anything else? He did try to squeeze information out of me about Adams. Just as any worthy guest would do. Have you anything else? Elizabeth and Volner had an affair right here, which came to an end. I haven't been able to determine who put an end to it, though. What my guests do in their beds is no concern of mine. But I shall take note, as jealousy can indeed often lead to folly. Anything else? No, I think that's enough to accuse him. It's a bit light, but I shall speak to Gregory about it and compare your findings with other information. Given the distinguished guests and the political issues involved at the conference, I trust you will leave me to conclude the case in my own way. At last we meet, Monsieur de Richet. Do you mind if I call you Louis? Please do. Thank you. I wish to apologize wholeheartedly, Louis. I made you cross the seas, and I wasn't even here to welcome you. When I asked you to join us here, it, it was, of course, in the hope that you would help us find your mother. But an act of horrific violence occurred during the night, and I do not know if this is linked to the disappearance of Sarah. If there's a possible link to my mother, I, I hope you'll let me know. In the early hours of the morning, Elizabeth Adams was found dead in her room, savagely mutilated with a knife. I'll get straight to the point, Louis. According to the initial elements at my disposal, you were the last person to see her alive. Yes, last night we... Uh... Do you suspect me? I want you to tell me everything that happened last night and leave nothing out. Tell me, how did the evening begin? Duchess Hillsborough and I were returning to our rooms when Elizabeth came up to us. She was in a state of panic and assisted that she needed to speak to me. She said she feared for her life. I took my leave of the Duchess and followed Elizabeth to her room. Mm -hmm. Continue. She insisted we have a drink, without which she refused to confide anything. What exactly did she want to speak about? She claimed she saw my mother the previous evening on the cliff, if I remember correctly. Interesting. I will send someone as soon as possible. But do go on. I refused to go on drinking with her. She already seemed drunk and her conversation became confused. So, then she ordered me to get out. If only I'd stayed. Don't blame yourself, Louis. How could you have known? But thank you for this new information. Louis, I shan't hide the fact that this tragedy puts me in a very delicate situation. I cannot risk upsetting the smooth operation of our next conference. But the case cannot remain unaddressed. I understand. What do you intend to do? I must reassure my guests, and justice will be done. And for that to happen, I must ask for your help. Why is that? You met Elizabeth. You spoke together, I believe. She trusted you. Listen, Louis. Find out who could have committed this murder. I refuse to believe that one of my guests is the murderer. I want to know who is responsible for this. And I trust you. You have my backing. 
You must stop at nothing. Can I count on you? Of course. H how would you like me to proceed? Maybe you could start by going to the scene of the crime. Elizabeth was attacked in her room. Do you have any suspects in mind, my lord? I spent most of the night talking with Sir Gregory and his eminence Piaggi. So, I think you can remove them from the list of suspects. Monsieur Bonaparte and President Washington left the party after midnight, I believe. They were tired and went up to bed. Can you tell me anything else about what happened? Now, Louis, I wouldn't want to influence you. Get over there and form your own opinion. Right. I'll get over there immediately. Thank you, Louis. Now, once you've finished, come back and let me know your findings. I'll be waiting. And Louis, you've got permission to search through the guests' rooms. They've all been notified and they agree. I've come to speak about the findings of the investigation, my lord. I'm listening, Louis. I'm sorry, my lord, but I don't have any evidence conclusive enough to allow me to name the culprit with certitude. Really? I see. Well, that's your decision, Louis, and I accept it. Given the distinguished guests and the sensitive political issues involved at the conference, I trust you'll leave me to conclude the case in my own way. How many times must I tell you? You must never put your life on the line for me. Mother has always had a fascination for Lord Mortimer, but has never wanted to tell me why. We are doing our utmost to find your mother as quickly as possible. Without your mother, hundreds of men of the cloth would have gone to the guillotine. All I can tell you is I'm looking for my sister. Do you believe your mother capable of torturing a child? An agreement for cannons. Lord Mortimer assured me that you are to take over the project on behalf of your mother. Johann Christoph von Wollner, Minister of Religious Affairs, and Jacques Peru, French Revolutionary Tribunal Judge. You will find that Lord Mortimer is not what one would call conventional, Monsieur de Richet. Monsieur de Richet, I am arresting you for the murder of Elizabeth Adams. At last we meet, Monsieur de Richet. Do you mind if I call you Louis? Please do. Thank you. I wish to apologize wholeheartedly, Louis. I made you cross the seas, and I wasn't even here to welcome you. When I asked you to join us here, it, it was, of course, in the hope that you would help us find your mother. Unfortunately, I am now confronted with another problem, which I would rather have done without. You see, last night, Miss Adams also went missing. I have had my people searching for her all over the island. Alas, to no avail. It so happens that both her mental and her physical health are extremely fragile. I'm worried that the same thing happened to her as to your mother. Also, I would appreciate it very much if you could tell me what you were doing on the floor in her room, in the early hours It's quite of normal. I, I can explain everything. Oh, <laughs> well, I'm glad to hear it. You see, Sir Gregory is about to arrive, and he's taken Elizabeth's disappearance very, very seriously. Please, reassure him so that we can talk about your mother. William, I would like to see you a moment before we begin. In... Private. Let's step outside a moment. Louis, this will only take a few moments.
better not make myself look more suspicious than I already do. Good evening, Monsieur de Richet. Likewise, Sir Gregory. Well then, let us begin. Gregory, Louis told me we needn't be concerned. Of course. Monsieur de Richet, the situation seems to escape your grasp, so I won't beat about the bush. Did you kill Elizabeth Adams? What are you talking about? I, I only helped her. We talked and she wanted to leave. I, I imagine that's what she did, right? We have found no trace of her leaving, monsieur. So allow me to have my doubts. Nor have we found any reason to believe that Louis is lying. We must remain calm, Gregory. We have found no evidence that would suggest that Elizabeth has been murdered. For the time being, she has only disappeared. Let's stick to the facts, if you please. Well, where is she then? She's probably gone back home. She didn't want to stay here any longer. She seemed very uncomfortable here. Why imagine the worst? Until there is evidence to the contrary, your mother is still lurking nearby, and I dare not think what would happen were they to meet. Damnation, William! This is a fiasco! Sir, you don't seem to realize just how serious this is. Let's try and remain calm, Gregory. In any case, it would be far better if Elizabeth really has left the island, as Louis says. Why do you think she wanted to leave? She was terrorized by my mother's presence here. Just the thought of coming face to face with her was unbearable. Did she tell you why? Yes, she brought the subject up. I'm sorry, Louis. It couldn't have been easy to hear. For your sake, I sincerely hope that she got there safely. Monsieur de Richet, I apologize if my words seemed a little abrupt. I dare not think what would happen if Elizabeth came across your mother on the island. Your generosity may well cost you dearly. I understand, my lord. I certainly regret it. You don't need us for any of this. So come along, Monsieur Peru. We are leaving. This sort of behavior is not working in your favor, young man. Gregory, Louis told me we needn't be concerned. Of course. Monsieur de Richet, the situation seems to escape your grasp, so I won't beat about the bush. Did you kill Elizabeth Adams? Everything's all mixed up in my head. I I'm sorry. Look, we had a few drinks and... I think I remember her putting laudanum in the wine and I, I started getting dizzy. I don't remember anything about last night. I don't think you could have provided a worse answer to that question. We must remain calm, Gregory. We have found no evidence that would suggest that Elizabeth has been murdered. For the time being, she has only disappeared. Let's stick to the facts, if you please. Well, where is she then? Last night when we talked, she said she felt uncomfortable here and spoke of leaving, but didn't say where to. Knowing Elizabeth, I am sure she must have spoken to you about your mother. I don't see the connection. What has my mother got to do with this? Gregory is suggesting he isn't certain that Elizabeth has left the island and that some misfortune might well have befallen her during the night. But that's not the case. Well, that's what you say. You are the last person who saw her alive. There might well be any number of reasons why you wanted her silenced. No one can substantiate your claim that she left as you said she did, Louis. Monsieur de Richet, we have given you every opportunity to reassure us as to the fate of Elizabeth. You have only succeeded in plunging yourself into deeper trouble. I will never rest until we are certain that Elizabeth is indeed alive. I assure you, my lord. We are obliged to believe you for the moment. 
Consequently, I shall make you a promise in return. If ever we find out that anything has happened to poor Elizabeth, I shall personally see to it that your head will land in a basket. You don't need us for any of this. So come along, Monsieur Peru. We are leaving. Is there nothing you want to say, Louis? I... Uh, it wasn't me. I, I, I didn't kill her. I, I'd much rather have met you under different circumstances. Lord Mortimer, believe me, I'm very conscious of the gravity of the situation. <laughs> Everything seems to point to me as the one who killed Elizabeth, but I swear I am innocent. Out of respect for your mother, rest assured that I do want to believe you. And all I want is to be able to prove it to you. When do we start? We already have. Tell me, Louis. How do you feel? I feel like a rat trapped in a maze. Interesting. I beg your pardon? Sarah also felt like she was trapped like an animal. Where are you going with this, my lord? Sarah's behavior grew odd before her disappearance. Her attitude changed, she became prey to outbursts of violence and a number of temporary absences. I'm just trying to make sure that you don't go getting lost like your mother did. You're not suggesting that I might have killed Elizabeth and that I don't remember, are you? I don't know, Louis. It's just that what with your mother and now you, it's rather a lot. The more I take stock of the situation, the more I'm under the impression that you've been set up. But, before going any further, I must inform you that Sir Gregory is about to arrive. He is coming to question you about the murder of poor Elizabeth, whom he was very fond of. He is quite determined to find the culprit, whomever they may be. So, convince him of your innocence. Then we can continue this conversation. William, I would like to see you a moment before we begin. In private. Let's step outside a moment. Louis, this will only take a few moments. Take this chance to look around. Please, sit back down, Louis. This sort of behavior is not working in your favor, young man. Monsieur de Richet, you were found standing over Miss Adams' body. We must shed some light on your responsibility in this tragedy. We shall then decide on your fate. But you must know that if you do not convince us of your innocence, it will cost you dearly. Now you're going to tell us everything that happened last night, without leaving any detail out. First things first, how did your evening begin? I was in the corridor and I was about to go to bed. Elizabeth appeared as 
if from nowhere, and rushed toward me. She took me by the arm and led me to her room. You say she... led you? All right, we'll accept that. Continue. We were heading for our rooms when Elizabeth burst into the corridor, barely dressed. She was panic-stricken and insisted on speaking to me. So I found myself in Elizabeth's room. We sat down together. She insisted we have a drink, or she would refuse to confide in me. Hmm. What exactly did she want to speak about at such a late hour? She was panicked. She claimed she had just seen my mother on the island. Did she say where she saw her? Huh. I seem to remember something about cliffs. Let us continue. And what happened next? Then she told me she had poured laudanum in my glass. The next minute I was on the floor. When I woke up, she was lying in a pool of blood. That is all you have to say? You expect us to believe that you have no idea what happened to her? Yes, because I'm telling you the truth. How can you possibly expect us to believe you? Gregory, we must consider every possibility. Louis, do you have any idea who could have done it? Well, even if I can't believe for a single instant that my mother could have murdered someone in that manner, she might have wanted to stop Elizabeth from speaking about their mutual past, and things might have turned nasty. It is indeed a possibility. I would like to thank you for helping us shed light on what happened last night. To be honest, you are not the only suspect. I'm prepared to believe you were drugged. Our poor Elizabeth hid the stuff everywhere, and I could smell laudanum on you three yards away. So you knew it wasn't me from the start? We weren't sure. Louis, I am sorry, but everything points in the same direction. I only know one person on this island who might have had a big enough grudge against Elizabeth who has no alibi, and whose behavior is, well, suspect. Not to mention dangerous. Tell me what happened before my arrival. I think I've been patient enough. You don't need us for any of this. So come along, Monsieur Peru. We are leaving. Louis, do you have any idea who could have done it? Why don't you ask him where he was last night? Monsieur Peru, what would his motive be? Do you have any proof? No, not exactly, but he'd already wrapped her up once. Monsieur de Richet, you should not accuse the first person to come along without at least some proof. I'm sure you are worthier than that. Can you think of anyone else? Maybe Mr. Washington. But of course! And what would his motive be? I believe he thought Elizabeth was stillborn. Washington could have been trying to protect the secret of his vice president, Elizabeth's father. Sorry, Louis, but it so happened that Mr. Washington spent most of the time with Duchess Hillsborough. She confirmed it. Let's finish this, William. I don't rightly know how we can give the benefit of the doubt to an individual who can manipulate the truth to absurdity. Louis. <sighs> Unfortunately, you haven't managed to convince us. You will agree that you had the time and the motive to commit the murder. I... I am devastated, but I must agree with Gregory and declare you guilty. Gentlemen, if you please, wait. There is something else. Elizabeth ended up telling me why my mother had tried to treat her. The voices in her head, is that it? She spoke to you about them too, didn't she? Gentlemen, I'm not a doctor, but she was persuaded she heard voices in her head. You don't think she might have killed herself, By do stabbing you? herself nine times. I find that extremely unlikely, don't what? you? What? 
Stabbed nine times? It appears that the murderer walked up and stabbed her several times from behind. We counted nine gashes in all. All of them were relatively shallow, and they were all given from roughly the same angle of attack. Traces of blood appear to prove that she was standing throughout the attack. If that's all the proof you have before dispensing justice, then you'll have innocent blood on your hands. There's no proof I, I could have committed the murder. You do know, sir, that the first impression is often the right one. We found you near dear Elizabeth's body. What could be simpler? Goodbye. No! Monsieur de Richer, you were found standing over Miss Adams' body. We must shed some light on your responsibility in this tragedy. We shall then decide on your fate. But you must know that if you do not convince us of your innocence, it will cost you dearly. Now you are going to tell us everything that happened last night without leaving any detail out. First things first, how did your evening begin? Duchess Hillsborough and I were returning to our rooms when Elizabeth came upon us. Oh, so you were with the Duchess? Yes, we were talking. We were walking up the stairs. It, it was late. Where did you come from? Uh, I don't remember. I, I think we came from the Grand Hall. Oh, isn't that surprising? Do continue. We were heading for our rooms when Elizabeth burst into the corridor, barely dressed. She was panic-stricken and insisted on speaking to me. So I found myself in Elizabeth's room. We sat down together. She insisted we have a drink or she would refuse to confide in me. Hmm. What exactly did she want to speak about at such a late hour? Well, she was terrorized by the fact that you invited her at the same time as my mother. She was surely victim to misconceptions, but felt trapped. She was convinced she was going to die. But why? Let's say she didn't believe in coincidences, shall we? You'll admit that the chances of my mother and Elizabeth bumping into each other on this island are pretty slim. Sorry if I'm putting my nose where it doesn't belong, my lord, but why did you invite them at the same time? Elizabeth spoke to you about her past. She came here so you could help her fight her demons. She must have told you about her encounters with my mother. Remember, Louis, I was not the one who invited dear Elizabeth. Indeed, it was me. And you seem to forget it was you that we found right next to poor Elizabeth's body. You had better start proving your innocence rather than trying to cast doubts on William here. Let's finish this, William. I don't rightly know how we can give the benefit of the doubt to an individual who can manipulate the truth to absurdity. Louis, unfortunately, you haven't managed to convince us. You will agree that you had the time and the motive to commit the murder. I... I am devastated, but I must agree with Gregory and declare you guilty. Gentlemen, if you please, wait. There is something else. Elizabeth ended up telling me why my mother had tried to treat her. The voices in her head, is that it? She spoke to you about them too, didn't she? Gentlemen, I'm not a doctor, but she was persuaded she heard voices in her head. You don't think she might have killed herself, By stabbing you? herself nine times. I find that extremely unlikely, don't you? What? Stabbed nine times? It appears that the murderer walked up and stabbed her several times from behind. We counted nine gashes in all. All of them were relatively shallow, and they were all given from roughly the same angle of attack. Traces of blood appear to prove that she was standing throughout the attack. If 
that's all the proof you have before dispensing justice, then you'll have innocent blood on your hands. There's no proof I, I could have committed the murder. You do know, sir, that the first impression is often the right one. We found you near dear Elizabeth's body. What could be simpler? Goodbye. No!